Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be cooking up crawfish or crayfish or crawdads or mud bugs. Whatever you want to call them, I'm going to be cooking them up. This weekend, we went to our Asian market and I saw a large bin of live crawfish. So, I decided this would be an opportune time to cook some up. Also, because I had a package of crawfish tails that had been sitting in my freezer that lovely Aaron sent me. And here is a crawfish trying to make its escape right here. Hello, friend. Live crawfish. Yeah, we're going to put that back in the bowl right there. And these have been waiting for me to make etouffee, which is a beautiful smothered crawfish or shrimp dish found in New Orleans. So, got to make that. So, I'm going to be doing crawfish two ways. I'm going to be doing a crawfish boil, and I'm also going to be making etouffee with these prepared tails. So I'm going to be using the words crayfish and crawfish interchangeably here, and they mean the same thing. They are referring to this little crustacean right here, and although they look like mini or baby lobsters, these are not lobsters at all. They often live in brackish waters, fresh waters, rivers, and are eaten in copious amounts down in New Orleans, and a traditional way to eat them is in a crawfish boil. So I've never actually had a true New Orleans crawfish boil before, but I have seen videos where families and friends get together, my crawfish are trying to escape, <laughs> and then these long tables set up outside covered in newspaper, and all the contents of the boil is spread out onto the newspaper, and everyone's eating, and I love that communal vibe and energy that happens over eating and sharing food together. It's messy, it's fun, it's outdoors, it's communal, it's just lovely. So today I'm going to attempt to recreate it a small scale. This is just a couple pounds of crawfish. So like fresh crabs, it's really important to eat your crawfish while they're still alive and fresh. So I had a styrofoam cooler and I put some ice cubes in the bottom, a little bit of water, some damp towels to keep them moist and vigorous. So if you're opposed to cooking up live crustaceans and you might want to skip ahead because I will be placing these into boiling water. Alrighty, so let's put our boil together. So I've got a big pot of boiling water here and I'm going to season this up. I'm going to add one small onion cut in half, a few cloves of garlic that have been crushed. Now I'm going to add a bunch of Cajun seasoning to this. This is what's going to give it tons of flavor. I'm probably adding oh, a few tablespoons. It's really important to get this broth really, really flavorful. Just adding a few small potatoes. So we're going to let this boil until the potatoes are starting to get tender. Not cooked all the way through, just tender, because we're going to continue cooking them with the crawfish. So put this to the side. Alrighty, so while my potatoes are boiling, let's go ahead and prepare our etouffee. Now etouffee, I've actually never really had before. This will be the first time I've ever made it, but I first learned about it when I was watching episodes of Emeril Lagasse on his cooking program on Food Network. And he made this dish, and it is a traditional dish of New Orleans, and it's basically a kind of smothered gravy dish using crawfish or shrimp. Today, I'm going to be making it with crawfish because I have this. This is one pound of clean crawfish tails. This came to me frozen, and I've had it sitting in my freezer. I let it thaw overnight in the refrigerator. And I can't wait to taste it. So the first thing we're going to do is cook up our roux. It's a very, very important component to this sauce. It's basically taking a fat and flour and cooking it together until the flour gets really nutty and brown. We're going to cook this till it has a kind of peanut butter color. So not only does it offer flavor, that really nutty richness, it also thickens the sauce because we're using flour. So I'm getting my pan nice and hot. I'm doing this in a cast iron skillet. So today's recipe is inspired by Chef Paul Prudhomme's recipe. I will put a link down below to the original recipe, but my recipe is cut in half because I only have one pound of crawfish tails. Alrighty, so in a hot skillet, we're going to add three and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil. Now to that, I'm going to add a little bit of melted butter. We're going to add more of that later. Next, we're going to add six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And now we're going to whisk that together. So if you were making a bechamel or a white sauce, you wouldn't cook this very long, just enough to get that raw flour taste out, but not to give it much color. But if you're making a gumbo, for example, you would cook this longer, so it would have a richer, kind of reddish brown color. So this is gonna go for about three or five minutes. It's starting to get a little bit toasted here, 
and I'm really starting to smell the nutty kind of toasted notes of the flour getting toasted and cooking. Now we've got to our peanut buttery stage. Now we're gonna add the trinity, bell pepper, onion, and celery. Just gonna add that in there. That's gonna cool this down. Oh boy, that's nice and hot. And we're gonna cook this for five minutes until the vegetables are nicely cooked. Now we're also gonna add one and a half teaspoons of our Cajun seasoning mix. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing! So the trinity that I mentioned earlier, that combination of bell pepper, onion, and celery is a take on the French mirepoix, which would be traditionally carrots, onions, and celery. So rather than using carrots, we're using bell peppers. So now that our vegetables have cooked down, we're gonna add some boiling seafood stock, about three quarters of a cup. Add this slowly. Now to this luscious, beautiful sauce, we're gonna add half cup of green onions. I'm gonna save some for garnish. I'm gonna switch implements and I'm gonna use this. Erin <laughs> very kindly included this in her package of Cajun treats. Isn't it stinking cute? It's totally appropriate for this. My little crawfish spatula to make my etouffee. I'm gonna stir in the onions. In go one pound of crawfish tails. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. Now we're gonna add the remaining butter. This has a lot of butter in it, but it is a Chef Paul Prudhomme recipe after all. This is one stick of butter. Oh my word. I mean, that alone will make this dish delicious, right? Look how luscious and glossy the butter makes it. Oh my goodness. So the crawfish tails are already cooked, so we don't wanna overcook this. We're just gonna warm it all the way through and let all the flavors kind of get happy together. So the recipe calls for another teaspoon and a half of seasoning, but depending on what type of seasoning and how much salt in it, you might want to make adjustments. So I'm going to give this a taste and see how much it needs. Oh my gosh, that looks gorgeous. Oh, that is well and good salty. It doesn't need any more seasoning. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to let that get warm and happy, and then we're going to serve this on rice. Yes! For reals, y'all, for reals. Cute. Alrighty, let's taste our crawfish etouffee. I've got some freshly cooked white rice right here. Now we're gonna ladle some of this goodness right on top. Oh man. <sighs> I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. Look at the beautiful red color of the crawfish tails. So beautiful. With that little bit of green onion. Love that color combination. We have complementary colors. Alrighty. Itadakimasu. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely delicious. Now, if you like shrimp, you will probably like crawfish. It's got a similar kind of flavor and texture. I think it's a little bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. The sauce is so flavorful and rich and nutty. You can taste a little bit of the celery in there, a little bit of the bell pepper, and then you've got the Cajun spice that kind of just ties everything together. It gives it a slight spiciness, just a little bit of spiciness. I definitely suggest putting half the amount of seasoning and then tasting it at the end to see if it needs any more. In my case, it didn't at all. The butter, of course, makes the sauce super rich. Delicious. And I love the fact that this is combined with rice. Love it. Perfect, perfect combination of both textures and flavors. The rice is just a perfect little backdrop to that sauce, and it just soaks up everything. I'm gonna stop because I still have my crawfish boil to eat. Now this has come back up to a boil. I just placed my corn in here, and my potatoes are nearly ready. Now we're gonna squeeze in the juice of one lemon. Drop that in there. Now we're gonna add some additional seasoning. So to pair the crawfish, I just ran them under lots of cold water until the water was nice and clear. And then we're going to add them to our pot. If you don't want to see this part, just skip ahead. 
So the crawfish are relatively small and they don't take much time to cook. So once this comes back up to a boil, we're gonna boil it for two minutes and then we're gonna kill the heat, let them sit in there for about five minutes and then we're gonna strain them out and then eat our crawfish. And the crawfish have turned a beautiful orange red color. I'm gonna scoop them out. Look at that. They smell wonderfully fresh. They don't smell stinky or seafoody at all. Whenever you're cooking seafood, you never want to smell stinkiness. That means your shellfish or fish was not fresh. Oh my gosh, so beautiful! Alrighty, will you look at this feast? How beautiful is this? Now, this was just a pound and a half of crawfish. If you were in New Orleans and really partaken in a crawfish boil, this would be an entire tabletop of just this kind of goodness. But in little Rhode Island, this was gonna have to do. Dust this with more seasoning, because this is flavor. Another traditional sauce that's had with this is a combination of ketchup and mayo. Two parts mayo to one part ketchup. It's like a fry sauce. To eat a crawfish, it's pretty simple. So we're gonna take the tail and remove it from the head. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna suck all this goodness out of it. Mm -hmm. You've got the seasoning, you've got the fat in there. Ooh, that seasoning straight up is nice and spicy. Now we're gonna take the first two kind of pieces of the shell off right there. And then we're gonna pinch the bottom and that should release the tail. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is beautiful. All right, let's give that a taste. Now, etouffee was really good, but this, this is where it's at. Oh my gosh, is that delicious. The crawfish is so fresh and juicy and succulent and not overcooked. It's a cross between crab and shrimp. It's got more of that sweeter flavor of crab and got a little bit of the bounce of shrimp, kind of like lobster, but not at all rubbery like lobster can be. <sighs> crawfish, they're my favorite. They're so delicious. Okay. so. Again, we're gonna remove the first two, give this a pinch, pull the tail out. It looks like a little mini lobster tail, but in my opinion, so much more delicious than lobster. Mmm. So, so sweet. My problem with lobster is that lobster tends to be a little bit too coarse and rubbery in texture for me, and a little goes a long way. Sometimes if I eat too much lobster, I feel really full and just like I've overindulged, which I probably have. But crawfish are delightful. I don't think it needs it, but let's try it with sauce. Mmm. That's delicious too. It actually kind of intensifies the sweetness and of course adds some of that richness because it is mayo after all, but pretty stinking good. I prefer it straight up though, because I feel like you really can taste the deliciousness that is the crawfish. So since we have it, let's taste a little bit of this corn. Mm. Now, it is just spring here in New England. We are definitely not in corn season, but nice little bite of corn on the cob is great. I don't like my corn on the cob overcooked. I like to put it in the last minute so it still has some of that kind of crunchy poppiness to it. And this certainly does. Delicious. It's not the best corn of the season because of course it's not summer, but it does hit the spot. It's been a while since I've had corn on the cob. But again, with that Cajun seasoning on top, a little bit of spiciness in your mouth. And I love the little baby-sized corn. Perfect little snack. Okay, let's try a spud. So we've got a potato here. I'm gonna put some of the sauce on there. Mmm, mmm. Oh my gosh, this stuff is so good. I'm gonna put a little extra on there. Mmm. This got a little celery spice in there, some salt. Definitely a little cayenne kick in there. Oh yes, I'm gonna put this on everything. I think there might be some MSG too. Mm-hmm, oh yeah, that's what makes it taste it. Mm-hmm, soft and waxy potato, a little bit of starch with really fresh crawfish. Absolutely delicious, perfect little picnic fare.
Alrighty, so there you have it, crawfish cooked two ways. I made an etouffee and I did a crawfish boil. Of the two, I have to say I actually prefer the crawfish boil. I feel like having it boiled with just the seasoning on top really allows the crawfish flavors to shine. Although the etouffee was delicious, I feel like just having it as a boil is just a really beautiful and simple way to have it. Plus, I love the kind of communal feel that comes with having a crawfish boil. So if you've ever had crawfish before, if you've ever hunted them, if you're from New Orleans, if you're from Louisiana, do chime in in the comments down below. I want to hear from you. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Oh, big thanks to Erin for sending me the crawfish tails in the first place and making the etouffee recipe possible. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>